would have at least taken a stance. Agreed. Um, agreed. Salute to salute to the, the streets of London. It says um, this is London in the early 1900s. So this is what this is what you Beautiful would see scene from early 1900s London. It really always amazes me looking at these videos. One step of how far backwards we've went is just in terms of presentability when we go out in public and not just in the way we dress either though surely you're not going to find a single pair of pajama pants or flip-flops in this bunch but just how happy and vibrant and full of life everybody seems to be from the few kids you see to the aged adults everybody's smiling everybody has a certain glow about them a certain energy about them the way they interact to with people um Even and also their... that that glider civility like gliders have a different social contract i've talked about this if you've ever been to a festival like if you've ever stumbled upon a festival or a, a pumpkin patch or a or a, 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 a orchard <laughs> where you can go you know what i'm saying we, like I, I took my daughter to an orchard it was a big orchard where you could go pick your own apples and they had like this area where they had you know games for the kids and they had like you know pumpkin games and a, and a straw ride you know you get on the little um wagon and drive ride through the you know whatever blah 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 they had a bunch of activities for kids but my daughter was the only black kid there right um and the the every time i spoke i felt like i was speaking so loud everyone was speaking at the same like you could have been like a hundred yards away and not known that it was 500 people in this little area they were all very on the same frequency nobody was here nobody was there everyone was on the same frequency and um, come in with that some man bass in your voice yeah i mean I, I just felt yeah and i i just felt like i was taking up a lot of space i felt like i was i don't feel like anybody was looking at me like why is he here or nothing like that i didn't get Probably that weren't. vibe but i got i got a vibe like yo these people are different sons it would be a lot of people being loud a lot of people you know the energy would be different People would be looking at the, with distrust people would be making you know um you know uh faces at each other people would be feeling animus towards others it would end in at a mass shooting place, when they asked one son to leave the pumpkin patch yeah this place was very very um the, and and I've gone to a lot of play, a lot of glider events throughout the years. I just talked about that one, but it, it, it where where you can tell like like this right here, this speed, this frequency. This is how they are when they're amongst each other. Yes, you're gonna have a serial killer every once in a while. Yes, you may have a mass shooter every once in a while. Yes, you're gonna have those things, but those things are gonna be aberrations. In public life, now, of course, these guys may beat the shit out of their wives in the home. Their, their wives may um, be terrible nags behind closed doors. Um, the children may be mischievous. I'm not saying that those things don't happen. What I'm saying is that their public contract, their social contract with each other is an expectation of a certain type of behavior. And in blacks, we don't have any expectation. Of a certain type of behavior whatever uh, goes goes let, let me say something though this this video this video we just watched here these white people are fiercely xenophobic in this snapshot of history is and that's their genetic baseline i, I understand never we're not the same but like this this idea that like gliders have like a genetic destiny to like always like self-implode is not i i think that's total bs well, hold on. I, I, they when I say when I say genetic destiny, I'm I'm talking about your DNA when faced with certain things. Like, okay, yes, if nobody ever came, if there was never any other oh, okay. group to come, I see. In, I see. I see. But when faced with those things, you guys always it. do that same thing. Ah. Uh, yeah. No, I see what you're saying. It's something I'll have to ponder. But hey, all they got to do is elect me or Fisherman as head of state, and then we'll fucking fix it. So, so there you go. Yeah, man. 
You guys got to You guys got it all figured oh, he's out. Oh, coal mining English children here. Yeah, look at these people. These people. I don't are, know, they might be eighteen. English majors. And and these people, listen. These people conquered the world. These people conquered the world. It's documented what they did, and that they took their coach. At, th- th- listen, this computer is white culture. The language I'm speaking is white Anglo-Saxon culture. Uh, this spray bottle, this mug, thermos mug, everything I have is white culture. The only thing I have that's African culture is my DNA. We created none of this. There's nothing that you use here. There's nothing that Africa gave to this. Maybe the drum, maybe that drum beat that you may hear on the radio or that you may hear in contemporary music. But other than that, we don't use any African inventions. We don't use any African customs here. Yeah, the lack of uh, instruments, musical instruments invented in Africa is definitely pretty telling. Yeah, just just basically the drum and in, in your voice, and maybe some um, like drill uh, rap. <laughs> but this is this is this is these are the people. These are the people that conquered the world. <laughs> I'm giving a rebel yell here. Yeah, no, they're different. No, they're different. Look at them. It's, we're not the same. <laughs> The reason why not, the, the reason why um, Britain is no longer like that because these people they invited coons in. If you invite coons in, then hey, you ain't your bed, you lay in it. True. Yeah, if but you invite coons in, well, your country will be in peril. At the start, they, they didn't really get a choice about that. In the mid sixties, no, they had a choice. The they, 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 have, they had a choice. You, you could have kept them. They, they had a Enoch choice Powell to keep literally them. Literally said, like, to get these they coons have, out of it. That's what Enoch Powell, Enoch Powell said. They got thrown out of the Tory party. So, they, no, they didn't get a choice in the 60s, no. There was no, there was no racist party. Yeah, there was going to end mass immigration. Like, Enoch Powell, Conservative MP, came out and said, oh. don't do this. The black man's going to get the whip hand over the native population, and it's going to end in rivers of blood. And he got sacked the next day. So... So there was yeah, somebody. Hold on, hold on, listen. There yeah, was they got me somebody. Up. Hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm what happened? Hey, hold on, man. Hold on, man. Hold on. I I, I want to talk to this other guy. Uh, you're saying that there was somebody in the UK that warned of this? Yeah, Enoch Powell. Yeah. Enoch Powell. Okay. He didn't get a prediction right, by the way. Sorry. Oh wow. Yeah, he, he, the, the, um, the, there's this guy called Enoch Power. He said oh, the black man's going to get the, um, the, the, um, yeah, the whip but, over the black man. That didn't come true. So, uh, yeah, but yeah, he's he, 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 he came true with third world people. Like, okay. It's, and even then, to be fair, like, they, blacks do fit into, into that. Like, but yeah, but basically, basically everything he said else came to pass, though. No, no, that's not true because he said um, the black man will get the whip over the white man. That didn't happen. Yes, yeah, so oh, what though? It's oh, like oh, it's it's it's, so more it's third world immigration, <laughs> mate. You know, it's the same thing. It's like you're just being like yeah, completely. He's, uh, yes, he's about the country. Yes. Yeah, third world immigration happened because the public invited them. If they didn't invite them, invited them, then it wouldn't have happened. Oh, but the native population were not behind immigration, mate. In the sixties, they were. Because because even voted. if you had a re- referendum on immigration now, like we like, they would probably lose still. Like people don't like immigration. Here, to my, 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 my friend here from the UK. Hold on. Do you do you acknowledge yeah, yeah, I'm that? Going to, I'm going to race the hey, hey, hold on, man. You gotta you gotta let people talk, man. So like you could please could stop, you please stop doing that? Um, Ayala, whatever you name, Aaliyah. What's your name? Aaliyah? Could, you fucking Aaliyah? What the fuck? A <laughs> yell, a yell, a yell. Please stop doing that. Please stop speaking over people. Please, man. Like, go ahead. Do you think you could acknowledge that? Uh, like, just think about it for a moment. When you vote in a democratic society, it's not really a democracy. You're voting for a representative, right? So as long as that representative has more than one issue that he needs to push and tackle, you can end up in situations where voties are, where parties are getting voted for, for some reasons that the populace likes, but unfortunately ones that they don't like get tagged along with it. If the indigenous Britain people just had the ability to have a full-on democracy 
that voted on one specific issue that said, don't ever bring black people to these fucking aisles, they would resoundingly say, fuck these black people, get them the fuck out of here, never bring them here. Do you agree with that hypothetical scenario? Uh, I agree with not bringing in coons, but no coons, no. No, no, blacks. And, and any non-indigenous people, no matter your color, as long as you're not a white indigenous Briton, in this hypothetical, do you think they would have voted for don't bring anybody here. I think resoundingly the answer would be yes. Do not bring anybody here. Let me say this. Let me say oh, this. They, they, they wouldn't have voted that. Oh. Brit, they, they made the British love immigration. That, that, that's why, that's why I call out the hypocrites. They do. I live, in, this. I live in Britain. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let, me, let me say this. I think, I think that this whole let in the good blacks but don't let in the bad blacks thing yo there's no way to possibly do that because a mother and her son in blackistan the mother could be have a degree from harvard and the son could want to be a thug um it's it's just yo the best thing for them to have the best thing to do is just to not invite to not have multicultural societies because no matter who you bring, it, whether it's people from New Zealand, Maori people, whether it's um, Aztecs, no matter who gliders bring in, they're going to be outflanked when it comes to violence. They're going to be outflanked when it comes to victimhood. They're going to be outflanked when it comes to um, just you know the the, uh, the 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 degradation of society. They're always going to get outflanked. Because they have a, they're different. They have a certain, um, a certain, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, a, a certain social contract that is created by their DNA. Like, look, look at the order in which they live. Look at, look at the difference between them and Asians. Asians couldn't withstand this. Asians could. The only thing, the difference between Asians or what we call tigers, and whites is. Tigers are more are crueler. They have a cruelty about them, and they have a um, a baseness and a shrewdness about them that gliders lack. So I think um, they would just nip this shit in the bud. Um, where gliders see, op they they're hopeful. 